So we all know that there's areas around our map that is protected, like at monuments, the dome, the launch site, stuff like that. You can't do any damage to the buildings that are around there. Well, let's say that we wanted to create our own areas around our map that have those same protections that the monuments do and many more. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Hey guys, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy, where I teach you guys all of the tips and tricks to owning and operating your own successful Rust server. If you're brand new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notification bells so that you get notified as soon as I upload new content. If you're a returning viewer to the channel, why haven't you subscribed yet? If at the end of the video, you found this helpful in any way, make sure you hit that like button for me. It helps me out a lot. And if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, make sure you put them in the comment section down below. Okay, enough jibber jabber, let's get right into the plugin. So the plugin that we're talking about tonight is called Zone Manager. And what it does is it allows us to create a spherical area around a particular zone, and we get to determine where that is, with a bunch of different tags that determine what is allowed and not allowed inside that zone. So this is the plugin that you're looking at on the screen right now. I'm gonna post a link to it down in the video description down below so that you can get to it super easy. I'm gonna quickly install this plugin and then we're gonna dive into the details of it and I'll show you exactly how this all works. If you've never seen a UMod plugin installed before, I'm gonna put a card in the top right hand corner right now that shows you a real quick video on how to install plugins and what to expect when you're doing so. This is what your console will say after the plugin is successfully installed. A couple of things that I wanna make a point of here. It, yes, it's going to create a config file, which we're gonna go into. But it's also going to create a data file. So anytime we create a zone using this plugin, it's going to add that zone into our data file. So this is one of the plugins where you would want to wipe your data file for zone manager every time you wipe your map. That way you're starting fresh. You don't have any existing zones or you're not going to have any conflicts with anything like that. It just makes it easier if you remember which plugins have a data file that need to be deleted every time you wipe your map. So this plugin has uh, just over a handful of different commands that we can use to control it. Commands such as adding a new zone, editing an existing zone, checking which tags are attached to which zone, listing all of the existing zones that you have on your server currently. I'll put a list of these different chat commands that we need to be able to use. I'll put them in the video description down below. You can use them as a quick reference guide. But of course, they're always available from the UMod website. Now the different types of flags that we can add to each zone, the list is quite extensive. So I'm just going to go through a couple of them, maybe some of the ones that I typically use, uh, depending on what it is that I'm trying to protect with my zone. Uh, but remember that all of the different flags that you can add to your zone are available from the UMod website when you go into the zone manager plugin page. So I just wanted to show you real quick, this is what my data folder looks like right now for our test server. And I just want to point out that there's no existing data file in there right now because we haven't created any zones on the test server. As soon as I create one zone, it's going to automatically create a data file and then we'll, we'll be able to go in from the server side of it and I'll show you exactly what the data file looks like once you've successfully created a zone. Let's hop into our test server real quick and I'll show you exactly what this process looks like. Okay, so I've just thrown down a real quick whatever. This is just a generic whatever, it's not really a base. I guess you could call it a shop. But let's say that as an admin, we wanted to set this up so that people could utilize this location, uh, but not raid it. We don't want our players to be able to damage this building. We don't want people to be able to raid it. We don't want people to be able to sleep in it so that they stay safe. Let's say we want no PVP action at this location. So anybody that comes into this zone is gonna be safe from other players. So let's get started on that and I'll show you exactly how zone manager works as well as how it works when you're adding tags. So the first thing that you wanna do is kinda of get to the center of whatever it is that you're trying to protect. Like I said at the beginning, this is gonna create like a sphere or a Actually, it's a dome uh, over top of this area. So we kind of want to be in the center of it. So the first command that we're going to want to use is slash zone underscore add. Looks just like that. So now it tells us that we've cre successfully created a new zone with this ID. And if we jump outside, I don't know if you guys are able to see that yet. Yeah, you can. So there's a zone. There's actually a dome. Actually, it's a full on sphere all the way around the zone that we just created. So it's not doing anything right now, but it's there, it's a zone. So let's say that we need a bigger radius. So let's, uh, being that we've just created the zone, we're already editing that zone. So we can just do zone radius. So we're gonna do slash zone radius, and then we need to enter in a number. So 
being that I don't remember what the default size is, I want to say it's 50, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, let's do 100. So radius is set to 100. Let's go out and see how big our dome is now, our sphere. So as you can see, now our sphere is absolutely monstrous. So we probably don't want to have it that big. So let's go back in and change it again. Let's put it to the 50. Okay, so that's that's 50 right there. You can still see my old sphere there, uh, but just trust me that once you change it, it's it will only apply to the new sphere. Okay, so now it's gone. So this is still quite large, but you can see how this might be beneficial depending on the size of the structure that you're trying to protect or the area that you're trying to protect. This gives you full control over that. So what else do we want to change about this zone? Well, first of all, let's make it so that nobody can raid this building. So the first tag that we're going to add to this zone is, is zone. Let's call it a shortened version of undestroyable. So it's U-N-D-E-S-T-R. And then you do true to turn that tag on. Undestructible set to true. We can also do, we can also make it so that nobody can upgrade this building. So no upgrade set to true. We also want to make it so that there's no PVP action at this location. So we can go slash zone PVP God true. So that makes it so that player versus player, they, they won't damage each other if they're shooting or fighting with each other or whatever. There's another tag that's similar to PVP God, which is PVE God, which is player versus environment God mode, basically is what that translates to. If we set this to true, that'll make it so that if animals attack, uh, it's not gonna do any damage to our players. But a huge, huge, huge caution to you is if you set PVE God true, your players can use this location to fight the heli or try to shoot down whatever it is they're trying to shoot down. You want to be super careful. So they won't take any damage if the heli shoots at them. Plus the building that they're standing in won't take any damage if the if the heli shoots its rockets or whatever. This can be a bit of a dangerous flag to use if it's not if I don't give you the caution. <laughs> and I had to learn this the hard way. So uh, I had a, a PVE God True on a zone that I had on one of my servers, and I found out like 10 days later that people were using that location to fight the heli with because it was super easy and they didn't take any damage and it was ridiculous and I felt really stupid. So I'm gonna save you guys that uh, embarrassment that I felt by doing that. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Now you have all the information about that flag. So I'm just gonna make PVE God set to false. I'm also gonna turn on auto lights. So the lights will automatically come on at night and they'll automatically shut off in the morning. Uh, another thing that we want to do, we want to make it so that people can't fall asleep here because they know they'll be safe. So we want to do slash zone eject sleepers true, just like that. There's also a flag in there that you can make it so that if anybody tries to go to sleep in here, it just automatically kills them. So. Uh, if we just do eject sleepers to true, it'll just kick them outside of the zone and their body will just be laying there unprotected from anything. We're going to add this no build flag so that people can't build onto our structure. And because this is an admin style base, we also have the ability to make it so that the tool cupboard is no longer required. So we do zone no cup true. So that makes it so that the cupboard requirements for this base or shop or whatever are no longer required. We can get rid of our TC and this will no longer decay. Another helpful thing that we can do for our players when they're ent entering a protected zone like this, we can send them a message saying, hey, you're entering a protected zone, no PVP allowed, whatever, whatever, you can tell them whatever you want. So in order to do that, we go slash zone, we go enter underscore message. So this is obviously the message that they're gonna receive when they come into the zone and we can put whatever we want in here. So enter message set to this area is protected, no PVP is allowed and sleepers will be ejected. So let me just show you what happens when I enter the zone. So if I'm just a regular player walking along, I'm coming to check out this base right here. As soon as I cross, cross that threshold of the zone, it sends me a message in chat saying this area is protected, no PVP is allowed, and sleepers will be ejected. We can also leave a message for people that are exiting the zone.
So the message that we used here was you are no longer protected by this zone, so be on guard. So let's leave this zone and make sure that that's actually working properly. There you go. So it sends you a message in chat. So that gives you a basic idea of how to create a zone and how to add the different, a couple of the different tags that are available. And like I said, I actually went back and counted them. There's 50 different flags that we can use for zone manager. So each individual zone that we create has 50 different options that are available to it. So let's say we've got a couple of different zones in various locations around the map and we want to know what the details of those zones are. So we can do zone underscore list. So this will show us a list of zones that we currently have on our map. Obviously, this is the only one that we have on this map, but you might have multiples. You might have many. Another thing I wanted to show you is you can actually associate a name with each zone. So it's considered a flag, so no underscore needed. So slash zone name, and then we can just put in a name there. So we're just going to put shop in there. So name set to shop. And now when we do zone underscore list, it will show the name that's associated with this zone ID. And that's handy when, when you're working with multiple different zones in different locations all over your map. So I've intentionally no clipped all the way across my map. And yes, I know this is just a test server. It's a really small map. It's, it's like that by design. But I wanted to show you what happens when you do, when you want to find out where a specific zone is. So let's do zone underscore list. And we want to zone underscore edit. 78161446. You are now editing the zone with this ID. So now you can see, you can actually see it off in the distance, right at the center of my screen. It shows you the sphere, even though we're all the way across the map. So this is helpful when you're trying to identify uh, which zone needs work or, or whatever it is that you're trying to do. It makes it super easy to identify where this zone is and how big it is. There you go. We're cruising up to our zone. We're going to get our message in chat. Yep, there we go. Perfect. So while we're editing the zone, we can just do slash zone, and this will give us everything that there is to know about this particular zone. So the name, blah, 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 all the different flags that we added to it, the enter message, the leave message, etc., etc. You get the idea. So in game, you have full control over the zone manager, each individual zone that you create. So let's go back over to server side so that I can show you what happened in the data folder. Okay, so back in our data folder, you can see now we have a folder in there called zone manager. And if we go inside that folder, we're gonna see zone data. So let's open that up and see what it looks like. Obviously we only have one zone created on this test server. So it's only gonna show the information for our singular zone, that's fine. But this shows basically all of the same information that we just saw when we do slash zone in game. But this is just another way that you can look at that same information. You can also edit this information right here. Just be cautious with it. Uh, if you screw something up, it's, it's definitely going to break the plugin and then you're going to be super frustrated. I find it a lot easier to actually just make all my edits in game. I've gotten pretty used to using the different commands associated with the plugin, but whatever works better for you. I've now shown you both ways. You figured out for yourself which one works better for you. And like I said at the intro of the video, during a wipe process so if you were changing whether it's a forced wipe by face punch or you run a different wipe schedule than face punch does you want to make sure that you pull this information out unless you're running the same map if you were going to run the same map over from one wipe to the next then you might consider leaving your zones where they are if you're just going to put the same items back in that location so for example like i can do a a copy pasta of that base that I just built. And if I was going to use the same map, wipe after wipe after wipe, all I'd have to do is go back to that zone and I could paste that building back in that position. It would save me a little bit of time, but your players aren't going to necessarily like having the same map all the time. So that is something to consider. If you want to wipe your zone information, every time you wipe your map, you just delete this folder right here called zone manager. It's going to get rid of all of the data that is associated with zones super easy going forward i am going to start letting you guys know when i when i think it's a good idea that you should be deleting your data folders on wipe cycles and just a real quick overview this is what the default configuration file is going to look like it gives you the ability to control what time your lights come on and go off and it also allows you to determine whether they utilize fuel the other section that's in the config file is how the plugin communicates with your players. So uh, as you can see there, by default, it's called zone manager. You can literally put whatever name you want in there. That is this line right here. 
You can change this name to whatever you want and that's how it's going to appear in chat. You can of course change the color of it by changing this hex code to whatever color that you want it to be. And down below that is just the version information. It's really only useful to the developer of the plugin. So that in a nutshell, is Zone Manager. It's a super powerful plugin. I use it on a quite a few of my servers. You're gonna find the different ways that you can use this plugin. There's literally hundreds of different things that you could do with it. So make sure you go through the list of the different flags that you can associate with your zones and let your creativity roll with it because there's, there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. If you found this video helpful or you just wanna support me, make sure you hit that like button for me. If you want to see more content just like this, make sure you hit that subscribe and of course, turn on notification bells. I'm going to put up some other videos on the right hand side of the screen. If you want to continue along with this series and learn more and more and more about the different plugins that I've explained so far, be sure to check out those videos. That's it for me. I'll see you guys on the next tutorial.